Hey, this is Mead McLean for AUSquared.com. I am uh, traveling at the moment, so you don't see me in my normal studio spot, but uh, I'm going to uh, bring you some, uh, some new ideas. Um, there have been a lot of questions lately on the uh, Learn Art subreddit about um, uh, drawing materials, um, especially like pencil drawing materials. So I'm going to go over uh, some of the basic things, um, some of the more advanced things, and uh, show you a little bit about how to use them and, and show you like what I keep in my drawing kit um, on a day-to-day -day basis. You're probably as sick as I am of seeing this this particular drawing but uh, uh, it's you know developed so we can kind of see like what all types of these things uh, can do. Um, so let's start with um, uh, just like uh, like a normal pencil. Um, usually I keep like a B pencil around, um, uh, and uh, this is is how I sharpen them. Um, in fact, let me show you like a perfectly sharpened one. Like this right here would be your ideal sharpening method, where there's a lot of lead sticking out. Um, and the reason for this is so that you can use a lot of the uh, a lot of the side. Um, which is really what you want when you're uh, when you're doing pencil drawing. At least in in the early stages, you want to just be able to kind of lay things in like that. But normally, I keep them with uh, a little less lead sticking out, and I don't usually sharpen them to like such a fine point because um, I'm lazy and uh, and I think it's still pretty easy to to work with. If I need a point, I'll just develop a point on here, you know, through drawing and working the side. Um, one of the methods that I'll show you later is, uh, is a method where you, like, um, cover your whole paper with a tone, sort of in a mid-tone, and then you erase into and darken the tone as necessary to uh, do your drawing, and uh, once you cover the whole paper, what you do is you take either, uh, you know, a uh, chamois cloth right here, um, which is just sort of a, uh, you know, uh, uh, cloth you can get like at any like auto parts store or whatever. They um, they usually um, uh, run a couple of bucks for like big cloth. Don't get it in an art store; it'd be too expensive. But um, uh, they're really absorbent and uh, and nice things to have. Um, and you want to keep one for charcoal and uh, one for graphite. That one I've been using for charcoal, so it's not going to be as useful. But um, you know, if you don't have money, a uh, piece of uh, tissue uh, or toilet paper that doesn't have any like like no lotion in the tissue, you know, um, you want it to be real dry. Uh, but you take you take the tissue, you kind of like ball it up and then you kind of take this tone and you rub it down and that kind of like evens out all your all your pencil marks it's kind of like um, using a blending stump in a little bit way in a little bit um, in a certain way um, and you notice that it takes that that area and kind of like blends it down knocks it down and uh, and also lightens the value because you're actually picking up some of the uh, some of the pencil on onto the paper um, so that's something you just want to keep around. Um, what I usually do is keep like a spread, like I'll keep a 7H, um, a, a 2H, a B, a 2B, something around like a 5B, like an 8B. Um, so you keep like, you know, a good variety of pencils. And what each of these things does is like, if you so if you start out with like an, 8, an 8B and make a tone, Let me put the microphone close to this because I actually noticed that there's like a little hard spot on here. Yeah, there it is. Um, sometimes graphite will get this, get a little hard spot in there. Um, and that's something you don't want. So like, I would not normally, I wouldn't want to recommend any graphite that has like um, different densities in it. And you'll just notice that um, as you uh, as you go along get more experience so 
one thing you can do when you put this sort of like super heavy um, uh, value down is then you go over it with like a 2H or something like that. And this is almost like using a blending stump because it just takes that dark and pushes it down. And you'll see that it, that it begins to like change the tone of that dark. Okay, and just for um, uh, just for extremes, we'll see what like the seven H does. Let me zoom in. Okay, so the seven H. See how it's darkening it, but it's becoming more of a silvery tone. Um, you can actually get different, almost color temperatures with with uh, uh, with uh, graphite, which is really awesome. Another thing you can do is just start with like, you know, the uh, super hard lead, and it builds up a nice even tone. And then you can take like your your five B. And then you can layer on top of that, which does something totally different. It's like uh, the hard pencil provides like a resist over which, uh, when you use a soft pencil, it doesn't like really absorb into the into the paper very much. Um, so that's an interesting uh, effect you can play with. Um, the other thing you're going to want uh, is uh, uh, you're going to want um, you know a bunch of erasers. Um, and one of the questions I saw recently on on Learn Art was uh, was uh, about needed rubber erasers. Like, what do I even do with those things? Um, Needed rubber erasers are, are basically the awesomest thing ever. Um, I'd never have thrown away a needed rubber eraser before. <laughs> so here's the newest one. Here's one I've had for, for a little bit. Um, uh, then I have this, this uh, whole big pile of, of needed rubber. So what I do is I'll, uh, I'll, take, uh, uh, I'll take the new package, rip it in half, and kind of like begin to have like a value scale um, of needed rubber erasers and uh, we'll sh show you what this does on, on the bird here. Um, a lot of times you kind of need to like actually warm them up a little bit before they um, do anything so you kind of like work them a little. So here you have like two different like almost colors so it's almost like having two different hardnesses of, uh, of a pencil. So like the one that's already picked up a bunch of stuff is going to create a more subtle effect with light touch. And the newer one is going to pick up a lot more. With the same bit of pressure. And generally you use like needed rubber just sort of like dabbing spots. When you get this surface on, on kneaded rubber where it picks up and kind of becomes a little shiny. Um, you can then use that to sort of like blend a little bit, sort of like a blending stump. Um, because it's already picked up its maximum amount of graphite, you're, you're then just sort of spreading it around on, on the page. So you can use that technique. Um, it's, it's pretty awesome. And you'll just want to keep like, you know, whole value scale. So when you're working in darks, you want to create subtleties and darks. You can use your your really dark needed rubber, um, unless you want to create like a highlight. And then you can always just like pinch them if you need like a knife thin uh, uh, line or erasure made. Um, so needed rubber is is awesome. Definitely keep a bunch of that around. Um, another couple of tools you want to have are these. Uh, uh, Mayped erasers. Um, 
I like these a lot. They're like triangle shaped. Um, they can be hard to find. Not all, not all art stores um, carry them. But this is kind of what it what it will turn into eventually. Is this like circle? So you can actually um, take this and with your knife, which I hope you have, um, you can actually like uh, you can just sharpen it um, as it gets old. So there I have like a nice crisp edge that I can like do some erasure with. Um, so that's kind of what you want the Mayped for so you can like really dig in and get like precise lines. And um, if you get like a gummed up eraser like this, all you gotta do is like take it on your jeans and just like rub it on your jeans a bunch and then you've like cleaned off a spot um, that you can use. So, um, that's something to keep in mind, a little handy dandy trick. Um, I'm not a fan, but blending stumps, they have their uses. Um, generally, if you're doing like a black and white charcoal drawing, you'll keep uh, one side charcoal, one side black. It doesn't really matter with graphite, you know, you can just like use it. Um, what I think happens with blending stumps is most people use them too early in the drawing and like kind of rely on that. So I'm thinking for this uh, for this crow's beak, there's probably not going to be a, like a whole bunch of texture to it. But I'm just going to use the blending stump to like ditch that. But the eye is probably going to be pretty smooth too, so I can jump in there. And I just uh, erased a highlight, so what I can do is take my uh, kneaded rubber, make a little point out of it pick that highlight back up real quick. Um, it's pretty, uh, pretty simple, simple deal. Um, so um, I'll show you now like what I actually keep in my uh, in my little materials box. I have this old um, this old box that I got when I bought a, uh, a, a fountain pen, and uh, and now I got some materials in here. So I keep a five B. Uh, lead pencil or uh, graphite. It's great for like doing sketches and stuff. I actually have a, a 3B in here as well. Um, that's uh, super useful. Um, generally, I pick softer ones for sketching because uh, I like to sketch on, on newsprint and just like junky paper and throw things away. I've got like my medium, uh, generally use um, needed rubber eraser. And then uh, I actually keep like a Conte crayon. Um, this is a this is a two two B Conte pencil, and it's like a totally different animal, but um, works really great for like um, like toned papers and like really cool um, effects with like newsprint because it's so soft. And I've kind of like rounded this out uh, to where it's got like a nice soft edge you can you can use the side with, or you can really get to a point if you need to. And I've also got a, uh, a colored Conte, which is cool for like um, drawing people. It's kind of something that uh, like classical, the old masters used to used to draw with. And then uh, here I keep like an ebony uh, pencil, jet black. Um, and these are awesome. They're a little more waxy than normal pencils, um, but they get this really rich dark, and they're real fun to sketch with. If you're learning how not to erase. Um, the ebony pencil is, is important. And then I also keep this thing, which is a black and white Conte in one thing. It's a simple little uh, little brass um, tool that you shove a, a Conte crayon in there and then you can flip back and forth for drawing on toned paper. Um, generally, you don't want to mix black and white when you're drawing with like Conte or, or charcoal. Um, but that's like the, the drawing kit that I keep every uh, everywhere. Um, for uh, other types of rendering, like classical rendering, I've got a specific set for that. So each, like, what I do is I, I make a little box for, like, each function that I want to do. I have, like, a box for, like, ink, box for graphite, uh, like, a box just to throw everything in, and then, like, a bo box for, like, classical rendering, and a box for, like, watercolor pencils, stuff like that. So I can just, like, grab a kit when I know, and I know that everything that I need is going to be in there. Um, so that's uh, that's real important. So let's play with this drawing and see like kind of like what 
what you can do with um, some of the uh, some of the um, the kit we've got developed. So um, I think I'm gonna take my two H and work into the eye a little bit and just like push some of this value down. I'm thinking that probably the uh, the feathers need like you know I'm gonna go into this this seven H to start to darken some of the feathers. I don't want that like silvery tone at the end, I think. The great thing about having a super hard pencil like that is that you absolutely cannot get dark. Um, so you don't have to worry about the pressure you put on it as much. And you can see how this is creating a total, totally different effect than just like the B pencil that I've been working with on this drawing. One thing you have to be careful with about hard pencil is actually like making um, making an actual ridge in the in the drawing. Um, which is really hard to recover from. So I'll show you what that looks like. So you take like, I put these like little ridges in there. And then when I put, um, you can actually use this to your advantage, but when I put like a soft pencil over them, the ridges actually are preserved. Um, and so that would be a useful mistake that you could potentially um, work with. Uh, on a certain drawing. There you should be able to see that right there. That the lines are incised and that's drawn on top of it. Um, and then it kind of works you know, works a little bit differently the other way you can you know, put your deep tone down. You can scratch your lines into it, and you can kind of like take your kneaded rubber, pick it back up, and those lines will be preserved. So if you wanted to create like this sort of texture, you could go about it in that way too. Um, that's a fascinating little uh, little mark making and erasure technique that you can work with. Um, and you'll kind of see how like these these deep tones with like the soft pencils are really different than what you get with, uh, with like harder um, harder bits of graphite. They really are a different color. There, you'll see some people that are just really excellent at um, at handling graphite and can handle like the. Uh, the actual tone and color of it. it takes a while to, to become sensitive to it, but if you play around with just like layering different hardnesses, um, you'll uh, you'll get the hang of it pretty quick. I think the soft ones deposit in a little bit more uh, warm way. Anyway, that's uh, that's really it. Uh, I don't think there's uh, anything else that I wanted to uh, to cover in terms of like uh, drawing materials. You don't need anything more more uh, specific than that to like get started, um, and even to take drawings uh, really far. Um, you don't need really anything fancy. I'm just using like a basic uh, basic paper here. It's bright white. It's got like a smooth tooth. You might like a like a heavy tooth. For you might like print making paper, but um, I generally like the smoother, the smoother stuff because um, I like to control my line work a little more. Uh, with the rough stuff, you can't avoid the texture of the paper, um, which is fine. Um, you can actually use the the pencils to like rub out the texture of of the paper, um, or even use like a spoon to flatten the paper in certain areas. Um, but uh, 
Yeah, that's it. We'll get we'll get in in depth with paper um, later uh, on something that's like more specific to that. But uh, that's all I got for now. Uh, again, this has been uh, Mead McLean for a squared dot com with uh, sort of a catch-all um, learn art subreddit uh, lesson um, on uh, on pencil drawing technique. Um, if you got any questions, uh, you know, feel free to ask me. Um, I'm pretty much available all the time uh, on on the internet and through email. Um, and uh, do check out a squared dot com. Thanks a lot. Bye.